Hey, good morning everyone. This is Glenn from Homebrew U. Uh, basically, I just wanted to do uh, my first YouTube video and just kind of give you an overview of my eHerms uh, brewing system that I've been working on for a while now. And um, yeah, let's check it out. All right, so basically I've got a uh, spa panel in the upper left corner there that has a 50 amp breaker in it, uh, which is a GFCI breaker and it's feeding a plug below that and then I have my power cord plugged into that and then it comes down basically comes right back up into the center of the panel and uh, that's that's what feeds all the power to that panel um, so this panel you know you've probably seen many like it um, I did build this and design it um, pretty much myself uh, I didn't follow um, you know the way others have done it necessarily uh, but I did kind of um, build it to uh, function the way I was hoping it would function best uh, anyways uh, so basically down in the bottom left corner here I've got a my pump one switch uh, bottom right corner is my pump two switch uh, in the center here this is a PID alarm selector so I can decide if I want to hear the alarm or not uh, when it goes on or goes off um, so basically, I just you know point to whichever PID I'm I'm uh, wanting to hear the alarm for. Uh, directly above it, I have a PID selector switch, and that guy there, if it's flipped this direction, this is my HLT PID, and to the right, that is my boil kettle PID. Um, and then these lights above will tell me if that PID is actually the one that's selected and running because you'll see in a moment here when I flip on the panel both these PIDs are going to light up so that just gives me a good visual um, to let me know that that, that is a hot uh, PID and there is a uh, potential current being sent to those uh, 5500 watt elements um, in the center here I've got a timer and that timer is a uh, it's multi-program timer so I can program multiple hop additions and um, and then that is also linked to this alarm buzzer here directly above it so each time uh, the timers up for a particular setting um, it'll not only light that up but it'll also beep at me um, to let me know the next hop addition needs to be made or that my mash is done or that my boils done or whatever I happen to be doing at that moment and then when I have either one of these PIDs selected with this switch down low here um, it will also alarm and let me know if I've hit a high temp or a low temp um, based on what I've got set in the PID controller. So it's just kind of a nice way to keep track of things. Um, upper left corner here, that's my power on off switch. Uh, in the top center here, that's my volt amp meter. And then on the top right corner here, um, something I did that, that I was really... Um, wanting was I have a voltage selector so I can select between 240 volt and 120 volt and the reason I did that is because um, these elements um, they're so hot at 5500 watts that um, if you're running 240 all the time it'll get hot so fast that the PID may tend to overshoot your target temp pretty easily when you get to the point where you're just trying to maintain temp. So it's great when you're ramping up, but then when you just want to maintain it, I found that 120 volt works a lot better at holding a temperature. And uh, the reason being is that at 120 volt, obviously less voltage, um, but it doesn't mean that you're getting half the wattage to the element. You're actually getting more like 25% of the wattage to the element. So that 5,500 watt element becomes closer to about 1,300, 1,350, something like that. Um, so you can see why, um, you know, it'd be a little bit easier to feather that that temperature when you're just trying to to maintain it over, um, you know, trying to ramp up temps quickly. So, anyways, uh, it's just a nice feature that that I felt was useful. And at the very top there, you see a couple little rectangular guys. Uh, those are a couple cooling fans that I have that are pulling heat out of the panel. Um, so just to kind of let you see what's going on here. So I've got just a square D breaker panel here. 
Uh, it's got a 50 amp uh, GFCI in it. And uh, so I flip that on. And then once I flip that on, it lights up my voltmeter here, which tells me the number of volts that are being sent to the panel currently. So right now it's looking like 233 volts. And you can see there's zero amps because I don't have any draw um, currently pulling. So uh, that's going to remain at zero unless um, you know the elements are actually firing. So anyways, um, power switch here. So once I flip that on, um, you'll see there that all the PIDs light up and the timer lights up as well. And um, the, uh, the red portion, the, the upper number, um, is the temperature that the probes are reading currently. And the green number is uh, what the PID is set at. So right now those numbers are insignificant. Basically I just run them all the way down low that way the PID isn't just you know trying to send a signal even though uh, the PID is not selected and there won't get you know no heat will pass uh, through anyways so I just don't want to wear out the relays so I just drop those temps to to something lower than whatever the current reading is on the probes um, so anyways uh, you can see those there and then again you can see the timer in the center um, which is uh, again just a nice feature to have um, and then uh, yeah so if I flip this guy here you'll see that that lights up on the left and that lights up on the right so again that's just a nice visual to show me that that PID is live and that if the uh, temp falls below whatever my set temp is that 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 element's going to fire, so it's it's a nice way to just make sure that you know nothing goes awry when I'm uh, cleaning or or not intending to uh, to have an element get hot. So, anyways, um, that's that, and um, I'll just kind of take you over here. This is my HLT, so this is a 40 quart um, aluminum pot, which I have my Herms coil in, and you can see that I have a 5500 watt element in the bottom there. Now one thing about these elements is that um, uh, you have high watt density and low watt density and also ultra low watt density. This particular one's a high watt density and the reason I went that route in the HLT is just because it's a little bit cheaper and uh, I don't have it direct firing any wart so there's no chance of scorching or caramelization or anything like that so I just figured I'd save a few bucks and just put a more of a standard element in that particular one and then um, you can basically see I just have some uh, compression fittings um, that the tubing is connected into and uh, so basically what happens as you know I'm sure is that the um, the wart runs in that lower barb there, which is directly connected uh, to the coil. It comes up through the coil inside the pot, and then it returns out of the upper port here. And then you can see here I have a T because I have a uh, my temperature uh, probe is inside of this T here. So basically, the PID is being controlled based on the wart temp that's passing through that upper um, that upper output there and uh, because that's when the you know the wart has been heated by the element which is bathed you know in a bath of water of say I don't know I find with my system a couple degrees over um, and I get pretty good um, pretty good wart temp just being a couple degrees over uh, my target setting so anyway that's half inch stainless coil tubing in there and um, that's my output and then from the output there um, comes here um, to my mash tun and right now I just have a five gallon um, cooler set up here I do also have a larger mash tun for when I do have bigger mashes um, but this suits me pretty well in a lot of cases um, 
So the wart basically goes in the upper port there and on the inside of the mash tun here, because um, I opted not to go through the lid, I have another barb and there is where I hook up a piece of silicone tubing and um, the silicone tubing just goes down and um, you know ends up creating the recirculation um, for uh, when I'm running the Herm system. And then you can see there, I've got a thermometer probe. And then in the very bottom, that's just another um, another barb there that um, my bazooka screen is normally hooked up to. But uh, I have it disconnected currently because I was cleaning. Uh, but anyways, so that's that. And uh, there's my, my thermometer on the outside. And, uh, uh, and then on the far right here, this is my boil kettle and I do have two valves on the boil kettle the valve on the right is my dip tube and the valve on the left is my uh, whirlpool um, valve so I'll just kinda take the lid off here and kinda show you down inside there um, so you can see my whirlpool arm um, my dip tube and then you can also see my um, heater element. Uh, so in this case you'll notice the heater element looks different. This is a um, ultra low watt density um, element and uh, that's really important in the boil kettle. Anything that your any heater element that your wart comes in contact with you really need to make sure that you use a low watt density or even an ultra low watt density. Um, basically that just minimizes the chance of uh, any you know, over caramelization or even scorching of the wart while the element is firing. Um, and then you can see there, I've got the temp probe coming through the wall there, so I can just kind of monitor my temp on that as well. Um, oh, and one other thing um, that's not really part of this, but in the center there, if you're curious what that is, I put a bottom dump drain in my kettle, uh, which allows me to. Um, basically dump like hot break material, um, hops, you know, any debris that might be in there. I'm kind I'm able to dump that before um, transferring into my fermenter. And uh, I'm using inch and a quarter uh, stainless piping for that. And uh, you can see right here where it comes out of that elbow there. And I've got enough clearance between the bottom of that and the floor to where I can slide a five gallon bucket underneath and catch whatever um, crap I want to catch and it's also nice for uh, when I'm cleaning because as we all know with our uh, boil kettles the dip tubes don't always pick up every last drop and being that this is an electric system the um, kettle is a bit tethered so when you're running electric and things are kind of anchored down with uh, you know ground points and um, the element being plugged in and the temperature sensor coming to it it's it's not convenient to just tip the thing over and dump out any residual water or wart or whatever might be left behind so that's where I found that that bottom drain really makes it nice um, so basically um, I'm gonna grab a flashlight here and I'll just kind of show you the um, kind of how I have it coming out of the bottom of the kettle. Again, this isn't really part of it, and I'll probably do a different um, video on this, but you can see there, that's coming out of the kettle, goes to a large valve that it can open, and then there's an elbow, and a large stainless pipe nipple, and then finally to the elbow. So anyways, um, just kind of an extra thing, just kind of makes life easier. Um, and uh, yeah, so and then down below, I do have a couple of March pumps. Um, I made this little device here that just kind of protects them uh, from any splashes and such getting in the motor. Um, it's just kind of nice having something easy to move out of the way if I want to. Um, here I've got a center inlet March pump, and then here I do have the, the standard inline uh, March pump. And uh, oftentimes I run them in tandem, which is nice because I really can, can
can get a great whirlpool going. Uh, so anyways, um, that's, that's it. Um, that's just kind of a, a quick tour of my eHerm system. And uh, it does work really well. It's very consistent. Uh, I'm able to hold mash temps right on the money. And uh, basically I can pretty much set it and forget it. And um, if you keep, uh, keep an eye out, I will be posting a video very shortly um, you know, of a brew day in process. So right now you can't quite see everything in operation, but um, I just kind of wanted to give a general overview of what's going on there. Uh, so anyways, um, thanks for watching. And again, this is Glenn with Homebrew U. And um, let's see if you have any comments, questions, anything like that you want to leave below. Feel free to do that as well. Um, I'll be uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions I can answer or, or uh, give any information that I can give, anything to, to help out a fellow home brewer. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching and uh, take care. Happy brewing.